Hello, 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 and welcome to my best of 2021 series. Uh, I'm going to be doing my top albums, my top songs. This video is just going to go over some honorable mentions that maybe I, I, I didn't didn't quite make it to the list. Uh, some of these are albums that I literally just listened to, so I didn't feel comfortable putting them anywhere just because they haven't really had time to, to grow on me quite a bit. Um, quite a bit of albums on here are ones that I just listened to. The list might, list might have looked different if I had enough time to, to get to these albums. I'll, I'll count these down first. We got uh, West Side Gun with uh, Hitler Wears Aramis 8, Side B. This was an interesting one. Um, probably the best of uh, any of the Griselda projects that came out this year. Um, uh, I love, I mean, the, the West Side Gun uh, ad-libs, uh, obviously, are just so great the boom, 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 boom always gets just like stuck in my head just looped repeatedly um some of the features on here were great that Tyler song was amazing uh we got twin shadow self-titled this was an interesting one haven't listened to it a bunch yet obviously but um i and i remember when some of the singles came out i wasn't too sure but as a full album it really kind of convinced me uh i like a lot of the sounds a lot of the reg reggae aspects um very interesting trouble paradise by slater this is a, a hyper pop um, hyper pop ish, uh, uh, album, a lot of cool, um, dance tracks, uh, love her vocals, I'm a big fan of the song Cowboys, that's a great one, uh, and, uh, I, I, I put Lil Baby on the list, just in general, um, I mean, the voice of the heroes, I just listened to the album, I thought it was pretty decent, um, but I think Lil Baby had one of the biggest glow-ups of 2021, um, he was not an artist that I was a huge fan of, uh, 2020, a lot of people, had a lot of issues with his voice it's very monotone and it just sounds like he's dying or like dead uh but he kind of reinvented himself this year he sounds the same but he has so much more energy um and i think that's shown a lot in a lot of the features he had this year as well as this album he did with Lil dirk the voice of the heroes i think is pretty good um next is black dresses forever in your hearts a great a great experimental pop album um some cool rock aesthetics, metal aesthetics, like how that one turned out. Origami Angel, Gami Gang. Uh, this is a, a emo album. Um, I really like what this group is doing. I think it is a bit a bit too long, uh, maybe a bit too scattered in concept. Uh, but um, I did enjoy this one quite a bit. Uh, next we got Delete Zeke, Frailty. This is a uh, experimental pop album. Um, kind of a sad one. Has a really moody vibe, but I enjoyed it a lot. Igloo Ghost with uh, Ley Line Eon. I think that's how you say that. Uh, I, I love how this album feels like kind of like an amusement park ride. I don't know if I'm the only one that thinks that, but um, uh, another another great experimental pop album. Uh, and in the in the theme of these last couple, these last few being experimental pop albums, we got Underscores with Fishmonger, which is one of the only hyper pop albums to drop this year. There was a, a disappointing lack of like true hyper pop that hopefully will not uh, carry through to 2022. I'm hoping to see more hyper pop next year. Um, Nick Cave and Warren Ellis with Carnage. This one really surprised me. Um, I did not expect myself to like this one that much, uh, especially from what I've heard about it, but out of all of these albums on this on this section of the list that I just listened to, this would be the one that's most likely to, 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 ha to grow on me enough to actually make my top albums list. I really, really like this one. It's very dark. It, it's a, it is a love album, but it's it sounds painful and very like uh, I don't know I, I'm still wrapping my head around it. Uh, really like this one a lot. Appreciate it a lot. Um, next we have Waste My Time by Quail. This is a band that uh, a band that is uh, uh, I'm I might be a bit biased. Um, they do go to my college, Ithaca College. I saw them. Uh, they they performed at one of the orientation events, but I do really like them. They're uh, they do like, uh, uh, jazz, jam band, pop, um, I, I love the, uh, the saxophone player is nice, the vocalist is, is great, she's, has a very powerful voice, um, check it out, it's a good, good, uh, good first debut record from them. Next is, uh, Richard Dawson and Circle with Henke, this is, a uh, uh, album that I found through Fantano, um, since he, uh, placed it pretty high on his list and gave it a 9. Uh, it's very weird, very weird, uh, alt indie rock, like, uh, opera, epic. It's strange, but I did enjoy quite a bit of it, so I thought I'd throw it on this list. Uh, and then finally, um, Lil Ugly Mane with Volcanic Bird Enemy and The Voiced Concern. Uh, this is a insane album. I do not know what to make of it. Uh, some of the songs I 
skip because I don't like them. A lot of the songs I am very confused about, but then that's why I like them. Uh, it's my first Little Ugly main album. I've heard that his uh, I've heard that his discography is is a journey. So I'm excited to maybe listen to some of the more of those um, next year. All right, uh, let's get into albums that that I did like quite a bit, but just did not really make the cut. Um, Paranual to see the next part of the dream. <laughs> Starting it off with Paranual, I think that's how you say that, uh, to see the next part of the dream. This is a, uh, a shoegazy dream pop album. Um, I, I like a lot of what it does. Um, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what this band does in the future. Um, but I think it is a bit one note, as a lot of, uh, as a lot of shoegaze uh, can tend to be. Um, and some of the ideas don't, th- I don't think work as well as others, but, uh, again, I really enjoyed it and, um, and so that's why it's on this part of the list. Next is Olivia Rodrigo with Sour. This is an album that really had to grow on me. Um, a lot of the songs, uh, did not really make too much of an impression the first time I listened to it, but upon multiple listens and also, you know, the, the massive popularity of it also helped. Um, it, it really did convince me on a lot of the songs. I mean, Driver's License has gone from maybe one of my least favorite songs to um to a song that I that I put on occasionally and and enjoy um so so uh, I'm I'm definitely super excited for whatever Olivia does next I think it will I think she's only going up from here next is uh Wolf Alice Blue Weekend uh I don't know much to say about this I don't have much to say about this one it's uh but I do like the very hazy aspect of it um. I love the lead vocalist voice. I don't remember her name, but um, she has a really nice voice, and yeah, it's 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 an enjoyable album. Um, next is Dark Side with uh, Spiral. This album had a lot of great singles leading up to it, but I didn't really uh, end up loving the rest of the album. It's still really good, has this kind of desert rock feel, um, but not much of it lives up to what I was really excited about with the singles. Um, Taurus with Thirstier. This is a, a nice indie rock album. I love this one. Um, I didn't end up really making the list. It got really close, but uh, I just feel like some of the songs weren't as fleshed out as I wanted them to be. Um, but again, the, it has some great cuts. The opening track is great. Uh, Hug from a Dinosaur is an amazing song. Um, definitely check this one out. Nas with King's Disease 2. And also uh, the album that Nas just released, Magic. Both of these uh, really surprised me. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of King's Disease 1, but, uh, King's Disease 2 really, uh, was a lot more, um, cohesive, I think. Uh, his, his, uh, bars were a lot better, the production was more inventive, and the new one, Magic, has this really old-school feel to it, and, uh, I think he pulled it off really well. I'd check these both out. Next is, uh, The Killers with Pressure Machine. Um, uh, this one also really surprised me. Uh, I don't really feel like The Killers is have ever been a band that has been good at making albums. They make some great songs, obviously, but uh, I've never really heard an album from them that really surprised me. But this album had a concept, and they really uh, executed it well. Uh, There's a lot of forgettable moments, but um, I think The Killers, what they did here is very uncharacteristic of them, and I think they did a great job with it. Next we have Hey What by Lowe. This is uh, very different from what uh, they kind of were known for, the slow core stuff that they did, but uh, they're taking this really um, experimental noise pop direction, and I think they did it really well. I'm not too familiar with what Lowe has done in the past, but this one really surprised me. Next, we have Wiki with Half God. Wiki is uh, one of my favorite lyricists, uh, and I did not really know much about him until this year. Uh, the way he writes songs about the most mundane things and makes them so interesting is uh, really special. Um, and this album was a joy to listen to. Definitely check it out. Next, we have Pink Panthers with To Hell With It. Uh, one of the coolest new pop artists, uh, really blowing up on TikTok. Uh, this album is 16 minutes long or 17 minutes long. It's insanely short, which is, I think, part of the reason why it didn't make it on the list. Um, I do wish it was a bit longer. wish it had more songs. Some of them don't hit as well as the ones that maybe blew up on TikTok, Um, but I'm really excited for this artist. Uh, Duran Duran with Future Past. This one uh, really did not get enough attention. Uh, It is definitely the best thing Duran Duran has put out in maybe a decade, maybe even longer than a decade. These guys are old, 
uh, and uh, they really um, they're really committing to this 80s throwback um, aesthetic that is kind of popular right now. Um, but they do it really well, um, and I think it turned out great. The War on Drugs, I Don't Live Here Anymore. This one was a bit disappointing, I'll be honest. I'm a pretty big fan of their last two albums, uh, and this one, uh, it seemed a bit more inconsistent. There was a couple great songs on it, but, um, nothing really got to the level of, uh, something like Strangest Thing on their last record. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, overall, it's a War on Drags record, and, and it's, it's relatively consistent, and I did enjoy it. Arca, um, who, uh, dropped five, no, four albums this year in an EP. Uh, one of the albums did end up on my top albums of the list, but I did, I would feel bad if I didn't shout out, uh, both Kick 2 and Kick 5, which were both, uh, very defining listens for me. They really couldn't go on my top albums of the list since I did limit it to one album per artist. But, um, you know, Kick 2 has some of the best neo-reggaeton, uh, production. It is, it is incredible, um, very futuristic. And, uh, in Kick 5, which is somehow influenced by the Minecraft soundtrack, I don't know. It is, it is a, a beautiful, beautiful ambient record. Um, definitely recommend uh, all of the all of the albums that she's released this year. Kick two, kick three, kick four, kick five. All of them are great. Check them out. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard dropped also dropped multiple albums this year, uh, and one of them did end up on the list, but the other one that didn't, I put on here. Butterfly three thousand, great uh, uh, great adventures into um, uh, into synth rock and uh, like like heavy use of arpeggiators. Uh, I think. Um, it really turned out really well. All right, there's a couple singles that I wanted to shout out. Um, first, we have Zella Day with Golden. Uh, this is a, a jam. Um, very happy, uh, very groovy. Uh, Backwash with I Lie Here Buried With My Rings and My Dresses, which is an insane, insane rap song. Uh, Young Thug had one of the catchier songs this year, TikTok. Um, uh, Aretzi with Drown. This is an artist that I discovered through a, a Facebook page. Um, uh, another, maybe a bit biased, uh, she also goes to my school, I've never met her, but, uh, I do really like the song, it has, gives me a lot of Sharon Van Etten vibes, um, some snow mill vibes, uh, a nice, nice soft indie rock song, uh, enjoyed it quite a bit, um, Illuminati Hotties with mm 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 o o o o a ya ya great title, uh, really catchy, um, very weird, uh, the record this year, um, I thought was pretty good, uh, and this song is probably my favorite off of it. Uh, Rufus De Soul with Alive, um, nice EDM song, uh, this one's really fun to drive to. Uh, we got Low, Days Like These, I talked about that album, um, this one's very powerful, very sad, sad song, just didn't make it, almost did. Uh, we have, uh, Wet Leg with Wet Dream. Wet Leg is, is really on the rise, um, making a name for themselves. This is, they haven't even dropped an album yet that's coming out in 2022, so I'm excited for that, but the singles they've released, along, this one along with, um, the one that got a bit more popular, uh, Chez Lange, uh, are both great, um, and I'm excited to see where they go. Polo G and Lil Wayne put out probably one of the better trap songs this year, Gang Gang. I thought that one uh, really, really surprised me. Uh, Polo G is not one of my favorite rappers, but um, I I really love the song. The vibe, the space of it is, is uh, amazing. Also wanted to shout out Taylor Swift with her uh, All Too Well 10-minute um, version. Uh, I, I did enjoy the 10-minute version. I don't know if I like it better than the original song. This year was my first year experiencing Red. Um, I've never listened to the album until this year, so I, I, I'm I still still trying to figure out whether or not I prefer the 10-minute version or not, but I wanted to shout out the Sad Girl Autumn version recorded at Long Pond Studios. This is uh, basically the 10-minute version of All Too Well if it was on Folklore, and that is my favorite Taylor album, and I think this version is absolutely beautiful. Um, next we have Full Tack, Lil Mariko, and Rico Nasty with the banger that is, uh, Simp. Uh, this song is hilarious. 
Lil Mareko is one of the most insane, hard-hitting uh, artists on the forefront of, of hyper-pop and deconstructed club right now. Uh, amazing. Uh, speaking of hyper-pop, we have Sarah Brand, uh, who got quite a bit of internet infamy, infamy, infamy from uh, her song Red Dress uh, with those, those like painful vocals, painfully out of tune vocals, and then she came, comes out with this really, really weird song called American Gap Rap. I didn't, I don't know if I love this song or hate this song, uh, but I think whatever she did uh, was completely purposeful, and for that reason I'm putting it on the list. Uh, since I'm not making a video about EPs, I have a couple EPs here that I want to shout out. First we have Caracara Bonito with Civilization 2, definitely my EP of the year. And if I were to count the the compilation that they released this year of Civilization 1 and Civilization 2, it would technically be my album of the year, but I decided not to count it. We have Poppy with the with Eat, the NXT soundtrack, uh, some of her best metal songs that she kind of just threw on this this weird EP. Um, I hope that she returns back to this, this uh, metal genre because uh, her last album didn't really turn out the way that I would have wanted it to. Time About from Yukika. Yukika is probably uh, my favorite uh, K-pop artist. Um, her blend of city pop and J-pop is very unique, and uh, and all, every song she puts out is a bop, and uh, it's, that goes for every song on this EP. Next is Last Year Was Weird, Volume 3, by TK Maiza. Um, her Volume 2 is one of my favorite rap EPs or albums. Uh, uh, that has come out in recent memory, and well, this one didn't really live up to that one. Um, I love her R&B direction, uh, very SZA influenced. Um, but she has her her own take on it, and there's some some definite bangers on this as well. We have Jasmine Sullivan with Hotels. I didn't know where to put this. Um, a lot of people have said that it's an album. A lot of people have said that it's an EP. I think the general consensus is that it's a mixtape. Mix tape, but it is really good. The concept is performed very well. Uh, definitely check this out. And uh, finally, we have Trips Over Cliff with Fireside. This is a project that my dad put out, um, and uh, I think it really turned out well. Uh, obviously, I'm a bit biased, but um, I highly, highly recommend. Super happy with how it turned out. Uh, a lot of these songs I absolutely love. Speaking of projects from people I know, I have this whole sec this whole separate section of, uh, of stuff that's been released that um, you know, I've been really enjoying, but I didn't feel comfortable putting on my top songs list or my top albums list because I do personally know the people that came out with them didn't feel right to rank them in, in some sort of list. But um, uh, first we have uh, Captain KRB with Slow Toast. Uh, this is an instrumental electronic album, um, and it re it's, it's really great. I love a lot of the, the space in it. Um, there's some cool breakcore songs, uh, and... Um, Honestly, it's it really, really, genuinely uh, is one of the most exciting uh, electronic instrumental releases I've heard this year. And then we have the song Beach Fuzz by Whiteboard Pipe Dreams. I don't know this guy super well. I met him at a party once, um, but, uh, and, he, and he told me about his band. And it's a, it's a nice uh, indie rock band. They have a bit of a lo-fi vibe going on, and uh, this song is uh, very interesting, and from what I understand, they have an album coming out next year, and uh, I'm really excited to hear it. That's about it for my honorable mentions list. Uh, this is kind of haphazardly thrown together, just so I can get some stuff out that uh, I did want to talk about that didn't necessarily make it to the top of the top of my albums and songs list. Um, and uh, those videos, the top albums of 2021 and my top songs of 2021, will be coming out in the days, uh, the subsequent days after I release this one. Definitely keep your eye out for that one, for those ones. Those I put more effort into um, and are a bit more planned. Um, but thanks for watching this one anyway. And uh, I'll see you, and hopefully you'll watch me count down my top albums and my top songs in the next couple of days. Thank you.